Uh, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. In today's video, we are taking a look at these DMM Check Plus units I have in front of me. This is my old one, and this is the new one that I've just purchased. Uh, this one I got back in 2018. Uh, this was when it was manufactured by Doug Malone, actually VoltageStandards.com. Um, I believe he then sold the design not long after that to a company set up who are actually DMM Check Plus. Um, who now make the new units. This unit is just uh, voltage, current and resistance. Later on a addition was developed to replace a couple of these posts and you could have a little PCB with some inductors and capacitance on. Um, I've always tried to get hold of that uh, when I remember and I usually kept forgetting and when I did remember I went and looked they were out of stock so I never have actually made that modification to this unit uh, a few weeks back. I did see a video on, from Tony Albus who had this new GMM Check Plus that has the voltage, current and capacitance, inductance and resistance all built into it. Um, so I got hold of one of these as a preference to get hold of the upgrades to this. However, in Europe now, this is available from Electron and you don't buy it from America Direct as I did this original unit. I will leave a link in the description box below for the video from Tony Albus because he has in that a link to purchase this from Electron so you can go over to his video, watch his video and purchase it via that link should you want to. Uh, back in the day this was around about $100 um, shipped over to me from America. This one here um, which I think equated to around about £70-£80 pounds at the time. Um, this one here, this is 226 euros on Electron, um, well, Electron I should say, and I did opt for an extra 10 euros to purchase a little PSU that you can now drive this from the mains as well as the internal battery. So to get this into the UK from well, Electron is in Germany, uh, that's 226 euros, 236 euros I should say, including the PSU. That came to uh, £207.70. Um, but I then had to pay VAT, uh, £43.32, customs fee of £4.25 and a handling fee of £12. So to get this now, this costs £267.27 pence to get it into the UK. So it's value for money as perhaps... Uh, drifted a little bit from what it was originally but yeah there's not much you can do about that if you want one you have to fork out for it don't you um, it probably still is one of the better value units for what it actually is and the accuracy that it delivers in comparison to what else is out there um, there are other voltage standards that don't perhaps have all this functionality and they certainly don't have the accuracy that this unit has um, but that's the units that's what I've got what I'll do is I'll set up some test equipment and we'll take some measurements from them and see how we get on Okay, so we are set up to make our readings on both of these DMM Check Plus units. Um, I will just cut through the video just so you see the actual values. We're starting off with revision 5, the old one down here. And I'm just verifying the battery voltage on there is currently 8.78 volts. So we are above the recommended value on that. Um, I have run auto cows on these and these instruments have been warming up for... Uh, just over an hour now um, it did come back to say it was ready for auto cal so uh, it should be all good to go uh, we are on dc volts we will go to first put our little instrument there and there we have our dc voltage measurement on our old unit so we're now on frequency, that's our first frequency. I am 50 hertz and one kilohertz on this unit. So there's the first frequency. If we put AC volts. So there's our AC voltage measurement at 50 hertz. Uh, we can just flick this back. And we should now be on one kilohertz. So that'll be the voltage at one kilohertz. And if I go to frequency, there's our one kilohertz measurement as well. So we've now flipped over to DC current and we're reading just over the one milliamp there on that. 
So we're measuring AC current at 50 hertz. There's the one milliamp on the Keithley there, and we are measuring uh, 49.99 hertz on 532208 here as well. If we go to uh, let me go to duty cycle, uh, we've got 49.99 cent on duty cycle as well. And if we can flip him over back to there, so this should now be the one kilohertz. Let's just go back to frequency on you. So we're now at one kilohertz on the key site here. And this is the one milliamp reading at one kilohertz on the Keithley there. And we can flip back and go to duty cycle at one kilohertz on there. And that's all those measurements made there. So now we can flip over to the resistance measurements. Okay, so we flipped over to resistance measurements, uh, two wire on this. Uh, we are reading 102 ohms there on the Keithley. It's quite high, isn't it? Okay, so we've just swapped the leads over, changed the leads out, and we've got a bit better measurement. So we'll do the resistance measurements with these leads. Uh, we've got 100.19. Now on the 100 ohm resistor, go to R1K. So that one, go to our 10K, that's that one, and we go to our 100K, and that's that one there. So that's all the measurements now complete on the old Revision 5. We can move over to the Revision 8 unit. So we're on to our Revision 8 unit, there is the DC voltage measurement there. Um, we can go to our AC voltage measurement. We'll just again, just verify which frequency this one is. Uh, so this is 100 hertz, and I think this is 10 kilohertz, the other frequency on this one. So there is our voltage at 100 hertz. We'll flip him. And there is our voltage at 10 kilohertz, we'll just verify that. Yep, there's our 10 kilohertz reading there. Okay, so there's our measurement at one milliamp DC there on the instrument. Okay, so there's our current measurement on AC amps. Not sure what's happening with that. There's something wrong with that one. Uh, we're on 100 hertz. Uh, let's go to our uh, duty cycle. There's our duty cycle at 100 hertz there. And we'll just do a flick on the switch. And there's our 10 kilohertz measurement there. Uh, and there's our duty cycle at 10 kilohertz. And there's our current measurement at 10 kilohertz as well. Okay, on with our resistance measurements. We are 100 ohm resistance measurement there. There's our 1 kilo ohm. There's 10 kilo ohms, slightly low. There's 100 kilo ohms, slightly low again. Okay, we're on our capacitance measurements on our Keithley here. You can see that's just not readable, so we switched over to our averaging function there, and we can get the reading from that one. Uh, I do have another instrument for measuring the capacitance and the inductance so we can clear this one out of the way and look at that. There's our 10 nanofarads there. And there's our 100 nanofarads. And finally our 1 microfarad. And there's our 1 microfarad reading. And so yeah, just before we kick this out of the way, I just want to go back to the uh, current measurement on this because I thought this should be one milliamp. Maybe we've got a faulty unit. No, we're 0.56 still. Hmm, no idea why that should be doing that. Uh, plug. Uh, mm, okay, need a little more investigation over that one. I'll knock this all out of the way and we'll set up to do the inductance measurements. 
Okay, so we are hooked up to our LCR meter, the 82817A. I have also run cows on this uh, open circuit and short circuit on the terminals, and I've set this to serial capacitance measurement at 10 kilohertz. 10 kilohertz is the test frequency spec on the calibration cell that comes with the DMM check plus. On our first capacitance there should be uh, one nanofarad and we are 962 picofarads. So we'll move along. Oh, there's our 10 nanofarad. There's our 100 nanofarad. And finally we have our one microfarad just there. That's that value there, all steady and fairly good. Let's go around and I need to change this to inductance. So we'll go serial inductance. Again, we're staying at 10 kilohertz. Uh, that should be one micro Henry, which is that one there. And we got 10 micro Henrys, which is a little high. And we go up to 100. It is also a little high. And then we go to 1 milli Henry finally. And that's that value there. And since we're here, we can look at um, serial resistance as well. We might as well just go through our resistance values. We're here, aren't we? We might as well do it. <coughs> it's 100 ohms. One kilo ohm, uh, ten kilo ohms, and one hundred k as well. Okay, so going back to our issue had with the AC current, we were reading zero point five six milliamps previously. Um, we've reset everything. Um, I did power this down. That didn't make any difference. I've now re switched this one off, repowered it all back up, let everything settle again, uh, reset all of this one, and we are now reading 1.0001 milliamps, which is much better value, and we are at 100 hertz on the frequency counter. Let's just flip him onto the 10 kilohertz, and we are now reading 0.98-ish milliamps. Um, so yeah, not sure what the original problem was with that really. It seems to be working fine now, which is obviously good, but curious as to why we had the issue beforehand. That's all our testing completed, and we can have a look at the results. Um, I'll put them up as two separate plots, one for each of these, uh, for the revision five first. Uh, this is the comparison of the measurements I made against the test certificate results back in 2018 and we can see there from the plot that the 100 ohm resistance reading is the worst value out by 0.125% so not that far out um, but it is the worst value uh, that could be something to do with the way I was taking the measurements, uh, two wire measurement, maybe a bit of contact resistance issue here. Um, I did have the meter set to auto zero. Um, I could try it again and drive it to a manual zero uh, and use a relative measurement or something like that, see if that gets me a bit closer. Um, but overall, I'm reasonably happy with that. If we look down at the bottom of the plot there, there's the data table, and you can see overall the differential range is minus 0.326% all the way up to 0.125% for that 100 ohm resistor. So very little deviation from those original values. Uh, I mean, it's the actual bottom eight values that are these ones here that are derived out of the electronics of the unit. They're the ones that can drift due to this unit. Uh, the other measurements made on the fixed resistors, that's going to be down to my test equipment. Um, so values for that are very very low deviation for those voltage and current measurements and the like so they're very very good very very happy with those results uh, pretty good for uh, a six-year-old unit really until a unit coming up to six years old 
Um, our new DMM checklist, I'll um, put the plot up for that. Um, interestingly enough, the 100 ohm resistance is also a relatively high measurement on that as well, 0.112% out in comparison to the results on the test certificate for this one, which kind of correlates perhaps to an, an issue with the instrument setup, because uh, it's the same issue that he had with the Revision 5 unit. Um, but looking at the voltage and current measurements, uh, frequency and the like on the Revision 8, they are all pretty good, uh, very close to in spec. The problem tends to be around those fixed values again, especially with regard to the capacitance, which is the worst ones, uh, up to 9% out on the capacitance, and then up to 5% out on the inductance. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what's causing that really. The results from the Keithley, they could be out capacitance wise because it's I think it's a one kilohertz signal, whereas the AT2817 that is, I did set that to 10 kilohertz, so that should have matched the test certificate. Um, inductance wise, yeah, not 100% sure. I do have another LCR meter, um, which is, it is in a bench instrument. It's a handheld instrument, so I can drag that out, set that up, and repeat the measurements with that at some point, and see if that gets me closer to the certificate values. But at the moment, um, they're the values that are giving me a bit of a headache. And I had the issue with the current measurement, not sure what that was either. Uh, but it seems to have got over that. I've not repeated that issue, so you can only assume uh, something went slightly awry during that reading. Don't know what. So overall, it seems to be a fairly good unit. Uh, I think the issues that I've had will be around my test methods, my measurement methods, um, and those are what I need to work on, really. Uh, that'll be it for this video. As I said, if you want to buy one of these units, I'll leave a link to the video from Tony Albus in the description box below, and you can go and check that one out. Uh, thanks very much for watching, hope you found it useful, and I'll see you again in the next one.